Hi, everyone. Yeah, so I'm Guilloui. I'm a product manager with Stadas, uh, and I'm going to talk about smart cards today. Um, we've been working in Stadas for two years now uh, on Keycard. Uh, it's an open source project, uh, and, and it's a framework to use smart cards in, uh, in blockchain applications. So um, I'm going to go through a couple of uh, things. Um, first, uh, what are smart cards? Um, why we do, we do need them in crypto, uh, and uh, what is this framework we've developed and uh, how you can get started. Uh, it's not going to be a super technical talk at all. Uh, I simply would like to show you that uh, with Keycard, you can very easily build your own smart cards if you wish. Uh, and uh, you can also join the Keycard ecosystem by using an existing card, the one from Status, for instance, uh, and integrate it in your application. And uh, I'll also talk uh, a lot about user adoption and the user experience in crypto. So what is a smart card exactly? Um, well, these are a really great piece of hardware. They are, you can see that as tiny computers. They run a OS. They have uh, their own memory. You can load uh, several applications on them that run concurrently. And they are secure elements before all. They've been built from the ground up to provide very strong uh, hardware security. Um, and one of the things uh, I find super interesting is that uh, most of you uh, right now have uh, several smart cards uh, probably uh, with you. Um, your credit cards, your SIM card in your phone, your public transportation cards, your passport, they all uh, hold a, a, a smart card. And what I mean, I mean, the, the point here is that there are smart cards are, is a technology that's already part of our everyday uh, life. Uh, they are a reality. They solve every day for you and for billions of people every day, uh, super sensitive authentication problems. So we already rely on, on them a lot. Um, and actually, the volumes of smart cards are massive. Um, there are 50 billion smart cards deployed in the world. And just next year, uh, there'll be 10 billion more manufactured. Uh, and, you know, these volumes, they have consequences. They, they really matter. Uh, first, from a product standpoint, we are talking here about uh, super standardized products. Um, their level of security is being challenged all the time, obviously, and it has reached a very high level uh, from a hardware standpoint over the years, and they are cost effective. Volumes are high and costs are, are, are pretty cost effective, as I, and I'll come back to that. And also for users, um, um, when a user sees such a card, he immediately identifies this um, with a very high level of security, and the form factor embodies the usage. He sees something that's going to be helpful for authentication or payments. Um, quickly, what is exactly a smart card? Um, well, there are sets of uh, ISO standards. I'm not going to go into details. Um, one interesting thing is that they can be used uh, either with, with the contacts uh, on the card or contactless. And in this case, we're using NFC technology. So there's the same contactless technology you've got in your uh, phones. Uh, and NFC is used both to power the card. It's a, smart cards are passive devices, uh, and also as a communication channel. Uh, and among smart cards, the super vast majority of them are Java cards. Uh, and that's what we'll talk about here. Uh, Java card, it's, uh, it's an open platform uh, for smart cards. Um, all the smart cards I was talking about, your Visa card, etc., are Java cards. Um, so there's a Java card OS running on the card, and you can uh, write and run uh, applets that are that you write in Java, uh, and you can load several of them, and they run on the card. Um, now, how are these things uh, manufactured? Um, there are well, roughly three main steps. First, you need to produce the module. I mean, that's the um, the, the chip you usually see on the card. Um, this is done by just a handful of companies. Uh, there are actually six manufacturers in the world uh, for, for these chips. They are um, silicon company. They manufacture silicon wafers. Uh, these are pick and place on the module. The level of uh, technicity of uh, this company is really super high. Uh, 
from there, the second step is you've got to manufacture the cars. And here, what's interesting um, for us is that there are hundreds and hundreds of factories that are able to use these modules and uh, manufacture cars. Whatever country you live in, you'll find such a factory, most likely. And uh, their level of technicity is not so high. I mean, there are companies that are good at uh, embedding a module in, a, in plastic or in some other form factor. I did put a, another form factor in the, in the shape of a ring that was done by Infineon here. Um, and the third step is simple. It's um, at, at the factory, you've got to run some scripts to load the right applets in the car. The message here, uh, to put it simply, is that it's fairly easy to source and uh, customize cards. Uh, and their cost is, is pretty cheap, actually. Um, for a quantity of, uh, let's say, a couple thousands of pieces, um, a card is going to cost between 2 and $3, very, very, very roughly. And these costs, they go down, obviously, if, when you, you order more. Um, OK, so now let's take a look at uh, why. Um, why wh what's, what problems we're solving with smart cards in, in, in crypto? Um, this might sound obvious, but um, obviously we're talking about security here. The overall idea is that these cards, they can store your private keys. They are not gonna, never going to leave the cards, uh, and all the signatures are done here. Um, so, um, well, well, it's, it's obvious. Your private keys are super important. Uh, protecting data, their security is, uh, is super important. It's giving you control over your assets, uh, your identity, your rights. Uh, um, and um, so the place where you store these keys is important. Um, they should not be on the server. Uh, they should be, they sh you should try not to have them on your phone uh, memory. So basically, we need hardware wallets. And, um, and, and smart cards are, are, are great hardware wallets because they are teeny, they are secure. They work with mobile because they're contactless and they're cost effective. That's one thing. Um, yeah, sorry. Um, also, um, there is this paradigm shift from the centralized world to the decentralized world. That's a bit difficult to explain to users uh, when you're onboarding them. The shift from the login and password world to a private key uh, world. Um, and we've got to make these users understand that they own their private key. Um, if they lose it, then it's lost. I mean, uh, we cannot recover it for them. Um, so um, hardware wallets help here too, because th these are these tangible uh, things where you know you, your keys are held. Uh, if you lose them and you lose your seed phrase, then you've lost everything. So um, it, ownership is important. And Last thing is smart cards can help with uh, onboarding. It's obvious we've got an onboarding issue in crypto. Uh, let's say you are a DApp developer. Um, it, it's still pretty hard to guide a user from the moment uh, it gets uh, awareness of your DApp uh, to, the moment, to the moment where they are ready to interact with it. There are a number of steps, uh, like how do you explain them, how to get the right wallet, to get the right browser. Um, how do you get the crypto assets to use the DAP? All this is, is still very complex and, and smart cards can help. I'll, I'll come back to that. Let's look at some concrete uh, examples of how key card can fit uh, crypto applications. Um, I mean, key card or, or smart cards in a more general manner. So first off, uh, this is the most obvious one. Uh, and this is what we've done with status application. Um, you can integrate uh, a smart card or key card here with any uh, mobile wallet, uh, whether it's iOS or Android, and, uh, and use the card as a hardware wallet. So transactions are forged on the mobile application. Uh, and once they are forged, the user can enter the pin of the card, tap the card, and the transaction is uh, transaction or its hash is provided to the card. It's signed in the card, and uh, the signature is sent back to the to the mobile application. The private keys that the card are, is holding uh, are either generated on the card directly or at setup imported from the mobile. Uh, but once they are on the card, obviously they never leave the card. 
And this works with mobile phones, but this could work with a desktop application or desktop wallets if you use a USB reader, um, uh, USB to, to contact reader where you're gonna um, uh, plug in your card. So that's one obvious application. Now, another one is um, uh, payments. Um, the card uh, and body's payments better than anything else just by its form factor. Um, so if you want to make physical crypto payments, you can build payment systems where the transactions are created by a, a point of sale. Uh, and the, the user just taps his card on the point of sale um, and um, is going gonna, is gonna to create a 100% crypto payment uh, with no Visa gateway here. We are really uh, on, on the blockchain and not using any Visa system. These cards can also bridge uh, blockchain and the physical world. Um, what we have to suppose here is that we've got a good way to, to fix uh, the uh, a smart card or the, the chip to uh, a physical object, um, um, usually in a way that you, you cannot uh, remove it from the object. Uh, this object can be a work of art or, or any object, actually. And owners of the object or service provider uh, can um, sign transaction when the object is being physically uh, uh, near uh, near them. Um, so it's pretty interesting because you can obviously limit counterfeit because it's a, you can this way authenticate an object. You can track art history uh, or uh, its provenance. And more generally, in supply chain, you can track the whole history uh, of an object. Another super interesting example, you can build cards that come preloaded with some assets, whether it's ETH, ERC20, or uh, non-fungible tokens. Um, uh, it's actually a great marketing tool because you can, these cards, you can print things on them, you can brand them, you can you can offer them in events. You could sell them in shops. You can put them in racks, uh, just like gift cards. Um, and so it's, it's solving part of the onboarding issue where we were talking about earlier. Remember, if you have a DAP, I mean, it's pretty tough to get new users and guide them to use the right tools, browser, wallet, etc., and how to get assets. So here, a card can help. Um, first, it makes your DAP tangible. Um, you can tap it on your phone to get the right softwares. Um, um, you can tap it to open your DAP, uh, just like a contact S3R code. And uh, it's, uh, uh, it, it can also come with preloaded uh, assets to start with, uh, with, with your DAP. Um, well, and there are more examples. The, the limit is your imagination, actually. But we've got some real life examples of uh, of uh, projects that did build with the keycard framework. Uh, at, so there's Gnudi Safe, uh, both on Android and iOS, that use uh, keycard software um, to use a keycard as a second factor signer of their multi sig uh, wallet. Grid Plus, uh, they have forked keycard code um, and they integrate a, a card physically, physically, sorry, in their Grid Plus device that they call Latice. And XPay, which is a crypto payment provider in Venezuela, uh, they wanted to replace the QR code paper that they print to those users who buy crypto with cash in stores in Venezuela and reply, replace this paper with a QR code by your key card. So these are just a couple of examples. Okay, now um, let's look at, uh, sorry. Uh, Let's look at um, Keycard per se, the, the, this framework. First, a word about the philosophy uh, of the project. Uh, everything's open. Um, of course, all the code is open source. You can use it as is. You can fork it. You can brand it the way you want. Um, our goal is really to create an ecosystem here. Uh, we want to promote the usage of smart cards. Um, and the work we've done here. So if you want to build your own smart cards, that's that's fine. I mean, just use the code uh, source cards and you can build your own smart cards, uh, or you can also 
ask us for help. Uh, we'd be happy to help uh, to manufacture them for you, uh, since we already produce some cards and we've got all the, the production and logistic channels set up here. Um, sorry, I'm trying to skip slides to switch slides. Um, okay, so um, what is the framework made of? It's made of three applets. That's what you can see here. Uh, they run in parallel in the card. Each one has its own features and corresponding use case. Uh, and there's one API to reach these three applets from, uh, from a, a, a mobile phone application or desktop application. And uh, we've developed some SDKs. There's uh, Android SDK and iOS SDK, and there's a command line interface also to control keycard. These three wallets, they do different things. Uh, Keycard Wallet is the main applet. Um, it's here to provide the most security. Uh, it's uh, storing value in the most secure way possible. Um, I, I'll come back on these things. Then you've got the NFC tag emulation applet. It's a su super simple one. It's here to use the card as a contactless QR code. Uh, and uh, you've got Keycard Cache. That's a simpler ve version of the Keycard Wallet. It's not here to store value, but here to sign meta transaction. And I, I'll come back to that too. The typical use case is to trigger the payment from a smart contract wallet, uh, but uh, I'll come back to that. Um, okay, so a deeper dive into keycard wallet applet. Um, so it's, it's basically a hierarchical deterministic uh, BIP32 wallet. Um, so you can either generate the secret on card with the, the, the true random number generator of, of the card, or you can load it at uh, setup from the, from your application. You can either load the, the, the seed or directly one key pair. Um, it can do key derivation and obviously it signs transaction. Um, in terms of security, um, there's a secure channel that must be set up uh, with uh, your app uh, before you do any interaction with the card. Um, the secure channel is set up with a shared secret on, on both sides. And there's a pin that the user needs to enter to validate any uh, operation with the card. So in terms of usage, it's a hardware wallet. You can, it's super secure. I mean, you, you can store a lot of value here. Uh, and you're going to use it with your own terminal that's been previously paired and trusted. Um, second applet, the NFC tag one. So as I said, it's 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 well, it's that simple. It just allows the card to behave like a NFC tag uh, or like a contactless QR code. Uh, through the API, you can set the NDEF value. The NDEF is the data that is shared with the phone when you tap the card. So usually it's a link or a deep link uh, within an application. And here, two most obvious use cases uh, are to launch the download of an application uh, or launch the app if it's already downloaded on the phone uh, or to um, launch a deep link uh, within an app if you want to trigger a specific uh, action within your, your app by tapping the card. And Last one, key card cache. Um, so this one is simpler. It embeds just one key pair. This key pair is always uh, generated uh, by the card. So it, it's generated there. It never left the, car, the, the card and it's ne never gonna leave it. So this private key is never known outside of the card. Um, and when you tap the card, it's gonna send the transaction. Uh, no secure channel, no pin. So why uh, we're doing that? Uh, because you cannot store much value on the um, on the um, the EOA, the external uh, own account um, um, represented by this key pair. Um, uh, but it's perfect for card payments uh, or redeeming some preloaded assets. And we're going to check an example. It's here to sign meta transactions. It's it's here to give the authorization to a smart contract to uh, perform some action. So um, one interesting question is how do you interface a DAP uh, with Keycard? There are two ways. The, 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 the obvious and simple one is option one here. Um, you've got a Web3 browser. Let's say on your phone, you've got a Web3 browser. 
Um, uh, and the, the wallet uh, associated with the Web3 browser uh, does support hardware wallets, and among these hardware wallets, it supports keycard. That's the example of, of status application, for instance. Um, so when a dApp within the browser is going to call for a transaction, you can sign this transaction with keycard. It's pretty simple. Um, and uh, so your key, the, your key card is signing a DAP uh, transaction. But it's supposed that your key card and the phone are already paired, which is fine. But in some use cases, um, it, it, it's not going to be okay from a user standpoint, because in some, let, let, let's take a, a option two example here. So what we've done is that we've built a feature. It's, it's within status browser. Uh, we call that the request screen, and it allows a DAP to call uh, for uh, that to forge a transaction uh, and um, pop up a request screen on the application. And then any card can be tapped on the phone to sign this transaction. So the typical use case here is you are a merchant, you're running a point of sale DAP uh, on a phone because you want to accept crypto transaction uh, from key cards in your shop. And you just want users to tap their card on your point of sale. You don't want them to enter some pairing code or some pin on your device. So that's um, that's something possible with this uh, request screen. Let's take an example um, of one use case. Uh, and what I'd like to show here is uh, how i mean why we've done these three applets uh, how they can all be used in one one given use case the use case here is if you want to distribute or sell uh cards that come preloaded with some assets could be some die could be some nft if you're a, 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 a d app game for instance um so um, what you want to do here, the use case is you want to, I mean, the assets are not, are not in the card per se. We don't want, in this use case, we didn't want to have the assets locked to the cards because uh, we wanted to prevent the case where you've manufactured a big batch of cards, like let's say 1,000. And if you get these cards stolen during the logistic part, you want to be able to recover these assets. So the assets are actually stored on the contract. So the use case here is to redeem the assets um, with the card uh, from smart contracts to the user, a user super secure uh, wallet on the key card. And this is how it's going to work. Um, so what, we, what I suppose here is that we've got a redeem DAP, redeeming DAP that's uh, deployed. Uh, I mean, its contract is deployed. And actually, we've got um, some GitHub repos with these contracts uh, uh, available if you want to play around and develop these kind of things. Uh, the redeeming contract is holding a list of the keycard cache uh, public keys and the hash of, uh, of a redeem code that the user is going to need to input to redeem the assets. And the flow is going to be like this uh, from start from end to end. First. Um, we suppose the user doesn't even know crypto or doesn't even have a Web3 web browser or wallet. So we're going to use the NFC tag app to just allow him to tap the card on his phone and to download the right application. So here it could be status, but it could be your wallet, uh, your browser. Um, so that we're guiding him here. Uh, he's, he's got uh, here um, the example of status. Then. Um, within the application, we're going to create a wallet for him. So we can create it for him. We can import a, one of his seeds uh, if he's got a seed uh, on mnemonic. And we're going to create a wallet inside the keycard wallet applet here. So we're using a different applet. Uh, and then once this is done, the user is going to be taken to the Web3 browser to a redeeming DAP where the user is going to, the redeeming DAP is going to call for the request screen we, we, we described earlier. Uh, and uh, it's going to sign the card, it's going to sign the meta transaction uh, to authorize uh, a redeeming contract to release assets to the user wallet. And um, uh, the, actual, the user is also gonna, going to enter 
the, is redeeming code at this step within the DAP. But the end thing is that the user is going to receive his assets uh, within the external owned uh, account that is actually stored uh, on the keycard wallet applet in the end. So we've covered the use case like that. And it's, it makes an experience. It sounds complex like that because here we see the technical side of it. But from a user standpoint, he's just going to tap a card, download an application. The application is going to guide him, and then he's going to retap uh, his card, and he's going to get assets in his wallet. So it's, it's pretty simple and helps with onboarding. So um, if you want to get started and want to play with a key card, um, um, so uh, uh, Michael said earlier that uh, there are some key cards to to win um, with uh, the event. Uh, you can also um, get some key card uh, on this side here. Um, all the documentation and GitHub repos are on keycard.tech. And in any case, please reach out to us. Um, the development of Keycard is super active. Uh, we are super open to feedbacks and super happy to help any projects that want to integrate smart cards. So please, uh, yeah, reach out. And that's what I wanted to show. Wow, awesome. What a great presentation, man. Thanks, it's a really cool overview. Um, how, it's about two years now that you've been working uh, on this. Why don't you stop scaring, sharing your screen and come back? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I'm here. <clears throat> yeah, it's been two years. Yeah, it's been two years. Yeah, we started by the applet itself, you know, the Java card side of things, uh, and then developed the API, the SDKs, the command line interface, and now we are we're into developing applications for that. We develop a payment um, a payment framework um, that's on our repos uh, with all the smart contract uh, wallet, uh, the point of sale DAP. Uh, all this is uh, available to play with and to create payment systems. And uh, now we're working on the redeeming system that I just talked about. What has been the, the biggest challenge in developing this product? Well, it's, um, well, it's, it's, um, there are di different aspects to the pro project. Of course, you're in, we're into the blockchain, smart contracts, wallets, uh, but there's also a Java card, you know, uh, there's a, um, I mean, there's nothing super complex per se, but it's the, the uh, amount of things of different things that we have to, to tackle at the same time, I'd say. Um, how is it with, uh, with actually with NFC card manufacturers and finding auditable product and, and that sort of stuff? Um, what sort of process do you go through to, to, to verify? Uh, the security of the devices that you're building on. So we um, we we are ourselves we, we are we are working with uh, NXP a lot. NXP, I mean, they're a great company. They are super open. Uh, they are GCOP uh, products, um, and um, we so we run an audit of our Java card uh, applet, um, but. <laughs> The, the, the thing is that the Java card OS per se is usually closed tools. I mean, that's the thing we have to, 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 to live with. Uh, these guys are not opening up their Java card uh, uh, OS. Uh, but from a security standpoint, they, they share all the audits, you know, they do for the banking world, basically. That, that's the good thing about these cards is that they are, they, are, they are being challenged from a security standpoint all the time. How far away do you think you are from being able to implement the cards uh, at quantity? What's the what's the, the what's the first quantity target uh, customer that would implement this? Uh, an exchange? Uh, are we looking at you know talking to to uh, um, what's Jack's project it's falling out of my head right now? Um, Square Crypto or uh, a bank or something? I mean, from a production standpoint, there's no issue. We can manufacture quantities with no problems. I mean, these are standard the hardwares. Uh, the software is mature. Now it's, I mean, we've already manufactured a couple of thousands. Um, 
manufacturing quantity is not a, a, an issue. It's uh, finding the right application that will work out with the real, real users uh, that, uh, that matter. Um, uh, so what do you think the likelihood is of one of the DeFi or startup uh, challenger banks or uh, crypto crossover uh, people like Square Crypto or, or something like that or a Lightning, uh, a Lightning uh, Network based bank? Um, how, how far away are we from, you know, somebody implementing, a, you know, 100,000 or a million of these for, for a user base? Hundred thousand, I don't know. I mean, it's super tough to say, but I think, um, yeah, the um, well, the 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 use case that's going to manufacture these cards in quantities is probably in DeFi. Yeah, uh, using this card as a, a super secure hardware wallet for Dex, for instance, makes a lot of sense because they want their, I mean, they they want their users to understand that they own the keys. Um, so they are pretty prone to uh, distribute or sell hardware wallets. The thing is that hardware wallets are pretty expensive today, um, and uh, a smart card is not. So um, it's a bet. I don't know, but maybe decentralized exchange will be the first one to deploy that in mass quantities. Uh, they could provide that to their high end. I mean, I mean, to some of their users, they could sell it, and it could be quite effective, cost effective. So yeah, DeFi, DEX, DEXs uh, makes a lot of sense.